alongside the head man, Coach Tim Tadlock. And it's good to be with him. We're not on site like we usually are at Rudy's Barbecue, South Loop and Slide, but they're still the sponsor of this great program. And you like this picture of you, Coach? Are you good with that one? Yeah, it looks good. Looks good to me, too. Yeah. Looks good. So, I, mean, I don't know that I really like it, but sure, it looks fine. Oh, he really likes it. Yeah, there you looks go. Looks good up there behind us here. And, again, swing by Rudy's. They've got the drive through open. They've got the ribs, and they got all the barbecue you want, all the sausage and the sauces and all those great things that come with Rudy's. Proud sponsor of the Tim Tadlock Radio Show. All right, Coach, um, I'd like to kind of start backwards a little bit, if possible, with Oklahoma State. Because I was uh, observing, it was from a distance, a short distance, just across uh, uh, campus, but I wasn't able to take in like I wanted to yesterday's game with the Cowboys. So kind of just to break that one down, a 6-5 victory, a big-time win for your guys. It looked like the crowd was great. Um, so just wherever you would like to start with yesterday, if you don't mind. Yeah, it, it was a good afternoon for college baseball. And um, really right now i got green chili stew on my mind. You're talking about Rudy so much. And, like, a, it just kept sticking in my mind. So, yeah. I'm going to get that out of there. Uh, <laughs> as far as Sunday afternoon, uh, ball bounced our way. Uh, guys executed pitches when we needed to. Uh, we had some, you know, some guys have some really good quality at bats through the day. Um, Drew Baker came up with the first RBI. And then Jace Young drove in a couple with a home run. And um, really had – it was just a good day to be at the ballpark. Thought uh, – Mason Montgomery was as good as he's been. Uh, stuff was really good. Um, Andrew Devine came in and faced a, a high school teammate of his, a kid he grew up with. Uh, promptly punched him out on, you'll have to ask Matt, four or five pitches. And uh, he made some big pitches, as did the rest of the guys. So Blett did the same thing. And, uh, and then obviously Bridges comes in with the bases loaded in the ninth and I don't know if you got to see it or not, but it did get a little bit uh, a little hairy, a little hairier than you wanted it to get. And uh, but at the same time, it's all those are opportunities for guys to to develop, and uh, glad they all were in them. Can you believe you played twenty games already? Um, well, I just looked at my watch to look at the date, and so am I right? It's March twenty second. Well, let me make sure. Is, yes, sir. Is that accurate? So for, as the, the only reason I knew that it was the we, first headlock you know, show. We, we we've uh, we've been fortunate, probably. I mean, we've played obviously in two big league stadiums, um, one in Arlington, the one in Houston. That pretty much ensures you you're going to play those six games, and so we haven't lost any games to weather, and we've been able to play our full schedule uh, so far. And so in a college baseball season, that's unusual. Uh, it's not so unusual in Lubbock, Texas, when you have the weather we have, which we like our weather. Uh, we tend to sell it that it, you know, over 365 days, the climate's one of the nicest ones in the country. Absolutely. And hey, not, even got not, some rain today. Not, yeah, not so much the, you know, the windy days you get. And so, um, yeah, we're for probably fortunate to get in 20, but we're we're also, uh, you know, we're kind of right in the middle of it. I heard uh, listening to Jamie that uh, – Jace ball, it kind of looked like a Zach Reams maybe type heading for the track. Did he get it to the track? He hit it good. I know the guys in the dugout were were joking with him, and like they he hits the fly balls to left, and they don't they don't count those as home runs. <laughs> and, you know, his teammates don't. I think there's a maybe a little bit of jack, you know, uh, you know, just jabbing at him a little bit. And they said, okay, so you got really you have two home runs now because you've only pulled two, and so. Turn those uh, over. He hit it awful good. It was well, a big moment. What do you think of Bridges? Again, I know he was on campus last year, and then, you know, COVID kind of destroyed everything. But uh, to bring him out there in a pressure situation like that, you got to be happy with that, huh? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about just really a neat story. Kid from Duncan, Oklahoma. My birthplace. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you've got some history in Stillwater. Um, both his parents went to school there. Um you know, Matt's really done a really good job with Derek. He changed his arm slot a little bit and uh, gave him a little bit more deception. And and then on top of that, Derek's kind of owned it and, and taken the ball when we asked him to take it and uh, thrown the ball to mitt and pretty much just gone pitch to pitch, which is, which is a tribute to, you know, who he is. I mean, he's a pitcher and, you know, he's not a thrower and 
Uh, he's just going to go try to execute pitches. My mother taught his dad in elementary school at Empire, Oklahoma. So I think that's a neat story. Yeah, for, yeah, that is cool. Having those kind of connections. We were talking to each other, and he was like, well, I'm glad you made the decision to come out here and pitch for Coach Gardner and Coach Tadlock. This is a good place. So take me to Saturday, uh, bounce back day, 4-2 over Oklahoma State. What do you remember about that one? Yeah, Montverde was really good. Um, he really set the tone for the day and got, gave, gave us a chance to uh, scratch some runs across. Uh, Micah Dallas made some awful big pitches, um, you know, in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. was really good uh, throughout, you know, throughout his three innings. And, um, you know, it was just uh, it was a, it was a day where the guys had to come out and grind one out. Um, their guy was really good. I think his last name is Robleski. Correct. Um, Left-hander, uh, really good stuff. He was a guy that uh, we knew the velo was in there, but he didn't use it all the time, which really showed a lot of maturity. Uh, and you kind of knew what you were in yeah. for. He was 90, 92 most of the day, but he'd go grab him a 95 or 6 when he needed to. And um, that's a sign of a guy kind of knows what he's doing. And, um, you know, the breaking ball was really good. And, uh, you know, we are fortunate – to you know come out on the right side of that one it's a heck of a bounce back because uh that and that's one of the great parts about baseball and jamie and i as we were wrapping up after a heck of a game friday night 2-0 oklahoma state and each team had opportunities and oklahoma state just had a few more things go their way and make a few more plays but as we were wrapping up it's like hey this is great we get to come back to the ballpark and try this again and sure enough you guys bounce back to friday i think one of the things that you mentioned to me in our, our interview was uh uh, I hope our guys didn't celebrate the back to back to back too much. Yeah. Did you feel like that happened at all? I, I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, you know, we told a few people just felt like the week was choppy because we played Monday morning, and then the guys had all Monday afternoon off, and that was a very emotional moment for the guys, and uh, we want them to celebrate those victories. And um, Tuesday's required day off and Wednesday was very windy, and so Matt took the guys, the pitchers inside and the hitters. We went outside for a little bit, and wasn't your normal Wednesday, so just didn't feel like it was, uh, and it's probably the biggest gap we'd had in a while mm -hmm. where we didn't have a game. And uh, baseball's a game, it's, it's probably a little bit easier for most people if you're playing it every day, mm -hmm. and I told one of my neighbors that last night, walking the dog, and we were just talking, and you know, they thought we didn't wouldn't like playing all the time. And really, it's probably the you know for us, we'd rather play more. And um, and so again, it's uh, I tell you, it's I, I it was just choppy. And but I don't know if it had anything to do with it. I think Parker Scott and uh, their guy out of the bullpen, Stanley. Stan Stanley, and I think Rob had a lot to do with that night. What's your dog's name? Lily. Lily? Yeah. What kind of dog? Uh, I, I can't really claim her that she's mine. I'm the one that gets to walk her. her she's uh, she's a multi-poo. <laughs> she's my kid's dog. They, they brought her home about uh, in 2009, so we've had her a while. She's, how, a, she's a good one. How, how's the family doing? I mean, I, it's, I know it's busy, but how is everybody? Yeah, everybody's good. Um, ben somehow invented a pop-up slide. Uh, head first the other day, back into first, stepped on his finger. Oh, no. Uh, he's fine. Uh, Chloe's doing good. You know, I took her a breakfast taco from George's right across the street here this morning. I uh, met her over at Animal Sciences about five minutes before her first class. And uh, she said she ate it on the back row. Hopefully I don't get her in trouble for saying that. Yeah. Mama's doing good. All right, that's great. All right, great start to the show. We'll come back. Got some questions from Matt Guns Up Radio. I have some uh, more questions. We'll look ahead to South Florida. We'll have Matt Gardner on. Got a bunch coming up here on Red Raider Baseball with Tim Tadlock. Stay tuned. We got more coming up on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. 
We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. And we're back on Texas Tech Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock, go by Rudy's. He was talking about breakfast tacos earlier. Rudy's has those and they are big time. Put some brisket in there, get your little hot sauce, get your morning started the right way. Uh, Dr. Mike Gustafson is always at Rudy's, we know this. Now, can you still get their breakfast tacos for half off past 10 a.m.? Maybe. Yeah, I've you never used done to that. could, you used to could. Just Boy. turn it into lunch? Yeah, just go in there and just wipe them out. You bet. Oh, man. It's good stuff there at Rudy's. South Loop and Slide, proud sponsor of this great award-winning radio program that is this uh, with uh, Coach Tim Tadlock. Can you believe this is year five with us? Do you ever feel like you're just going from one radio show Absolutely. to the next one? Absolutely. Like, yeah, it seems like you are calling a basketball game last night. I was. Yeah. A, a one that ripped our hearts out. It did. It did. I hated to see that. And, but really what I was talking about for you, I mean, it seems like you're always talking, staying pretty busy. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a uh, two-year-old native Texan that I changed her diapers this morning. So I'm a busy man. That's good for you. I know. So yeah, I, that's I good love for her. you. She's great. Enjoy those. And we times. have, we have a, 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 one of our three born in, in Lubbock, Texas. So where it's truly a part of us, man, it's been great. Um, I'm going to start you with a deep question. Uh-oh. Yeah. We're getting out of softball range here to start. What would you like college baseball fans to think of when they think of Texas Tech? Oh, um, let's think about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we when we set out and we started this thing, we, we really wanted to put a product on the field that you couldn't get up and leave your seat. Hopefully, uh, a bunch of guys that play the game the right way. And then if you do leave your seat, you might miss something you've never seen. And uh, and I think we've had some guys um, that fill that role. Um, but on, on a, just a more, I mean, just guys that show up every day and try to earn the right to win. Yeah. Um, you're right about that. I've never seen that stuff because we've had that already with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs for a walk-off. I don't know if I'd ever seen uh, a, a pitcher run out of the bullpen and and turn around and go back like Brandon Gurton did against UConn. Yeah, a lot of time those guys don't wait. <laughs> they don't wait. I mean, we, we don't go to the mound a lot. And so if they see if they see me going, a lot of times they think, okay, I'm the guy and I'm going. So Here comes the uh, hook. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't so that time. He was, he was a little early. Um, how has recruiting changed with COVID-19? Um, you know, the, just being able to see people in person and what I mean by that's people in general at the ballpark. And a lot of times being at the ballpark rewards you, uh, and it's, uh, you might not see a player there, um, but you might, I mean, baseball is a sport that's heavily scouted, um, by pro scouts and by college scouts. And I think the biggest thing is just not seeing and maybe not seeing people as much and having the ability to out hustle somebody mm. uh, by being there uh, and not necessarily by being on the phone, uh, by being at a game and maybe just in casual conversation say, hey, you know, I saw this guy over there. There's probably not as much of that going on. Now it's more, hey, look at my – Twitter video, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I throw hard or I got a good swing and really hard to decipher who the right person is there. Um, I know our staff really enjoys the process of going and evaluating people and being at games. And um, so, I mean, I think that would be the biggest thing. And, and with baseball, you know, I can imagine that you're watching the action on the field. But I bet you're watching the guy as he walks to the dugout, how he's interacting with the players in the dugout, how he's talking with the coaches, how he receives coaching. The, all those things can't be done on a Twitter highlight video that's one no. minute long, right? Is there, no. Is there some truth to that? I'm, I may be wrong. Yeah, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, 
I felt like the minute I saw Eric Gutierrez play catch as a ninth grader, he was a baseball player by watching him stretch and play catch. And he ended up being a pretty decent baseball player. Uh, but he's also a guy you could walk away from because his height and and you know he, he was a little backwards, goals. hit right, threw left, and oh, that's my son. Not did, in trouble. Did all that stuff, and um, but so there are those guys, and there's guys that can trick you on that side of it too. I mean, there's guys that can warm up and play catch the right way, and then maybe not be able to play in a game. So there's always value in being able to. The more game experience you can watch a guy, the better off you are. And it cuts down on your Frito chili pies. Isn't that what you said yeah. was one of your favorite concession yeah. items? Yeah, absolutely. Where was that? Where's the McCurry's from? Tupelo, Matt? Yeah, it is Tupelo. Yeah, Tupelo, Oklahoma. Okay. Best chili pie I've ever had. Out there in the sticks. Yeah. So if you're going to Tupelo, Oklahoma, that's, that was going to be one of my questions. How do you, how do you snare a guy that uh, – Throws really hard from Shattuck. How does that go? Yeah, that's interesting. Brandon um, Gurton. Yeah, you know, he was a guy that was kind of on the circuit and was out there, and uh, we, we were lucky they, they believed in us. Yeah, and here he is throwing out of your bullpen and, and trying to, to work through some of those things. Who would win? This is from Jerry here. Who would win a Texas Tech 40-yard dash off? Like if you lined up the fastest guys – because I saw, I saw strength and conditioning coach Tory Stevens bragging on uh, uh, Braxton Fulford, saying he ran a, a 4 5 one, something like that, and he was the second fastest on the team in 10 yards. So if it's a 40-yard uh, dash, who do you think comes in first, second, third, that kind of deal? Oh, I'm going to say it's going to be a dead heat between Marzak and Baker, and Noisy's going to be right there behind them. Dylan Carter's going to be right in the mix there. Um, and Braxton might be a step behind him. I don't think he's going to be up there with him. When's the rest, last time that you sprinted? Nah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I got a hammy that I pulled one night in Amarillo about 2 o'clock in the morning after a rain delay, and it still shows up. Oh, so, gosh. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, I tell we you. didn't rehab him. No, you know, in the nineties, you just you didn't have Brian and, Simpson to help no, you out. No, no, just rest it and put a put an ice pack back there. Maybe hope it gets yeah. better. Oh my gosh, that's great! Uh, fantastic stories. I'm glad you brought up Dylan Carter. Can you give us an update on him? Yeah, he's uh, he's kind of getting going this week. I mean, he's uh, actually talked to Brian today about is he going to be fully released by the weekend? We're hoping he is. Um. You got you got a lot of decisions to make, don't you, in that outfield? Is it is it more this year than in, in some years, or is it always kind of this way, where you could make twenty different decisions on how you line that thing up? I mean, I, I imagine, and I know you like to put a lot of concentration into the lineup card. I imagine there's been a lot of thought process going on in that baby, because again, nine, ten guys, not very many spots. Yeah, it's uh, I tell you, it's. Um... What you like is when guys make it easy, when they write their own name in there. Oh. Like Drew Baker's been doing. Yeah. That, that makes it easy. He's going to be in there. There you go. All right, we'll come back. We've got to talk about South Florida. We'll talk about a lot more. We've got to get some questions from at Guns Up Radio. And uh, this is the Tim Tadlock Radio Show. And, again, not live from Rudy's, but uh, they're in our hearts. Rudy's Barbecue there on the South Loop and Slide. Go by and check them out tonight. You'll be a hero when you take home the food to the family. More coming up on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. At Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. And we're back on the Tim Tadlock Show, talking Red Raider baseball here, sponsored by Rudy's. Go by Rudy's, pick up the ribs and the sausage, brisket and uh, the bread and Stew? Green chili stew. 
I'll just tell them leave you. that. Leave that for the Tadlock household. Yeah, don't don't steal that from Coach Tadlock. He's got to take that. Actually, home. I've never been in there where they didn't have it. So oh, that's okay. That's good. That's good. Um, we've been talking all kinds of things. Went over the Oklahoma State series. Uh, Red Raiders playing some really good ball. Um, had the, the, the win streak snapped, but – uh, got right back after it and took two more against Oklahoma State. Got South Florida coming up this weekend. Um, I can only imagine the, the meetings that you had when, when COVID-19 hit um, about how you're going to piece together. You know, baseball's got limited scholarships anyway. There's not a lot of money to go around. And then you start thinking about, okay, this guy could come back. This guy might, oh, my gosh, which way? How hard was that puzzle to fit together? <laughs> you're laughing. Yeah, it was, uh, it took a little time. Um, it was a big discussion. Obviously, the baseball coaches wanted more scholarships just to make it easy. Um, in reality, that really wasn't going to happen. We got more roster spots to make it easier. Um, the cool thing about baseball is, is most baseball families, by the time they're committed to a school, they understand 11.7 scholarships divided up between around 30 guys. And they understand that nobody's on a full scholarship. And they understand it's, you know, to have a good team, generally, you have to work together. Yeah. And so we were fortunate to have, some, you know, uh, and we've always been fortunate. Ever since we've been here, we've had families that have been willing to help us put a good team on the field. And what I mean by that is is maybe taking less than they would have taken somewhere else, you know, to to allow us to be as competitive as we can be. And so, but as far as like the add the COVID piece in and the extra year of eligibility and everybody sitting at home talking about how are we going to do this? Yeah. There was a lot of people that had answers. And at the end of the day, it was, hey, you've got 11.7 scholarships. You're going to be able to have this many guys on there and manage your roster the way you've always managed it. And so that simplified it for us, quite honestly. And, uh, you know, but it, I'm, it wasn't hard, but it was one of those things, too, that it just took up a lot of time. Uh, a lot of phone calls with a lot of baseball coaches, you know, you know that had the answers. And in reality was it was a time where nobody was getting more. I mean, really, you know, with all the um, cutbacks and athletic departments and everything, everybody was just trying to make it work. Yeah, and uh, just the unknowns. And, and that, I think that the COVID-19 brought that to every level of your life. I mean, just like, I mean, are we still going to be able to play baseball? Are we still going to be able yeah. to have college athletics? Yeah. And that's why days like uh, – you know, uh, Friday and Saturday when you know how bad things were and things are still bad for people. At, there's no doubt uh, around Texas, around the world, but just be, being able to see those crowds. We, we got great fans, Coach, man. We do. We do. We got great I mean, fans. We, we got the best fans in the country. We appreciate them coming out. and The guys really embrace playing in front of them. And uh, – what a college baseball community. What a baseball community we live in. It's uh, it's second to none. I mean, there's a lot of people that know baseball in this town. Um, sure are. And, you know, it's just uh, a lot of people are passionate about it. And uh, there's a lot of good Red Raider fans that like just coming out to the ballpark. And we got a great venue to, to sit and watch a game and enjoy a baseball game. And, uh, and again, hopefully we're, we're a piece of that puzzle that we're putting something on the field that they want to watch. Yeah, it's it's been fantastic to see the crowds showing up in droves and uh, getting them what they want and, and getting rowdy too. And, and I know the night that you the night that you petitioned the students, there were a lot of students there that well, let's night. Get them, let's get let's, them, keep coming. All right, so let, let's say, hey, now you have, this, you have the floor here on yeah. a Monday night. How big are those students coming to the game? I mean, it always helps, absolutely. I mean, that the section over there – um, above the third baseline, I mean, we'd love to see that full of students. And also above the first baseline, if if there's room there. That's behind me, so I don't see it all the time. Uh, but there's a section over there that's uh, kind of tailor-made for them. And uh, 
I'm sure they got a cold beer somewhere there in the, in the ballpark and a hot dog. I just can't believe nobody's brought me one yet. We'll get one nobody, somebody. I mean, we can get somebody on that. We, we can get that delivered. I'm right there. I mean, where I got you the, are. the door open. Did I see Shash chasing foul balls over the weekend? I'm pretty sure um, we don't have as many people on the field as normal. So Shash so is stepping up. He probably just opened the gate and. He's been around. He kind of, <laughs> when he sees something needs done, he does it. <laughs> oh, we were having a good time with that in the booth. All right, so I, I want to get, it's um, National Athletic Trainers Month. Okay, so let's give Brian Simpson a little bit of run here. Uh, through all this with the, the, the testing, and then I had to be notified by Brian, hey, we need you to show up to test. Yeah. And, and baseball, guys, wear down. I mean, the shoulders, the you know, arms, Got hit here. Got the, you know, it's already a huge job than tossing COVID. How big is having a guy you can trust like Brian yeah. on your staff? Yeah, Brian, Brian Grant Stovall, Dr. Fi, all of those guys um, are guys that we can literally call any time of the day. They'll answer the phone. Uh, they're willing to help. Um, and that goes for our staff. That goes for our players. Um, without those guys, this thing is, is a total different deal. It's, uh, they make our jobs easy when it comes to COVID, when it comes to injuries and comes to, you know, maybe, uh, pitchers, arm care, things of that nature. Um, and I tell you, I've been around some good ones. Uh, Brian's developed into, you know, he's, he's really good at what he does and he's really passionate about it. And that's probably where it starts. Yeah. I love talking to him it was pretty funny we uh we did a little side interview and i said well brian i hope i don't have to come see you because a couple times he's bailed me out mm -hmm. on some back issues and that kind of deal so what do you think happens to me i go up there about the mm -hmm. seventh inning after that uh lightning delay i get a knot in my shoulder and it starts pulsating all the way down into my knuckles and i can't breathe up there hardly uh -oh. And I was like, I just should have left it. I shouldn't have said anything to Brian because I was feeling good before. But how about this? One of your Red Raider baseball fans, a retired chiropractor, he's up there adjusting my back in the postgame show while Jamie's talking. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, I tell you, I put out a tweet. That's how bad I was hurting. So, uh, yeah. I get, uh, it's just great. Uh, the, somebody came to my rescue, which I need rescuing a lot. I don't Hurt know back's you... no fun. Oh, it hurts so bad. Um, I've enjoyed talking to Brandon Birdsell. What kind of guy is he? I tell you what, you know what you're getting every day. He's going to show up. He's going to prepare. Um, he's a great teammate. Um, I, I tell you, if you had 27 of them, you'd be in good shape. What are the main differences between Jace and Josh? I know you've probably been asked that a bunch, but what are the main differences? Um, that's interesting. I mean, we're we talking baseball. We're we talking the off field. the field. On the field and, and how they handle themselves on the field. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, Jace, Jace more fiery. I think Jace will uh, do about whatever he's got to do, and I'm not saying Josh won't, but Jace is um, he's very competitive, and uh, he wants to beat you, and he wants to do things the right way, and he's also and Josh is all those things and above. Um, Jace has got a little mean streak in him sometimes when it comes to playing and. Uh, he probably on the field, I think people will see this, shows his emotion a little more than Josh ever would. Um, it had to be a really big moment for Josh to get really excited. Josh was pretty even killed all the time. and uh, I don't even know if it's fair for me to even have to answer it because they're both really good at what oh, they do. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you nailed it just from what I've seen. Did yeah. you check on Josh when you heard uh... – the bad news about the foot. I, I haven't I haven't talked to him since that happened. Um, what did you think when you Jeff saw that just news? told me about it Saturday morning, and uh, Jeff and Mary were headed that way when our series was over. So I figured he's in good hands. Yeah, absolutely. Bad, tough stuff, but uh, he'll get uh, he'll get rehabbed, and, and it looked like he won't miss too much of the season because of where this injury has occurred. Uh, how you feeling about the bullpen there at the at the very back end? Uh, I know we got Coach Gardner coming up, and I can ask him some pitching questions. But how are you thinking about the bullpen overall? I really like our bullpen. Um, we've got some pieces down there that have plenty of capability. Um, 
you know, we have obviously don't have a midweek this week, um, so that adds a midweek starter into the bullpen. Um, obviously, having Micah down there this past weekend was nice. Um, you know, really like Girton, really like Bridges, really like Queen, really like Hayde Key, um, Chase Hampton, keep going on and on. All those guys are guys that um, – have the ability to go pitch to pitch and get anybody out. And so we we really like it. All right. Well, we'll let you go with this. Uh, South Florida coming up. What do you know about the Bulls? Yeah, so far don't know much about them. Hadn't got there yet. <laughs> how about that for a preview? Yeah. Uh, I, I, how about this? I don't know anything about them either. Yeah, I mean, I tell you, I mean, they, it's they Monday played and- uh, Florida Atlantic on Sunday. I think they won a one-run game and – We'll dive into that here in a little bit. Absolutely. you got time to do it. And that game's coming up Friday, 6.30, I believe. That sounds about right. Yeah, 6.30 on Friday. We'll have a great crowd. And we'll have um, another series off and running. Just real, real quick, your picture of the Big 12. Now that teams have played some games, has anything surprised you from the league schools? Um, well, you're only talking about four teams that have played – um league games i think you learn more as you play league games um we saw texas and tcu early obviously both of them can really pitch uh both of them got really talented players um yeah i think the league's going to be really good Uh, kansas state's going to be better than they've been um they got a couple frontline guys on the weekend that are arms in this league man uh, and so it's a it's a pitching rich league uh, usually is, and um, I'm sure it'll be a tough one. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate hey, it, man. You bet. Appreciate it. All right. That's Tim Tadlock. We've got Matt Gardner coming up right after this. Stay tuned on the Texas Textbooks Network from Learfield IMG College. At Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. We're back on Tim Tadlock's radio show talking Red Raider baseball from the United Supermarkets Arena as we do this remote here, at least for the rest of this year. Still sponsored by Rudy's Barbecue, South Loop, and Slide. Terrific stuff down there. Ought to go check it out anytime you can. I know Matt Gardner does. Not as much as uh, Coach Gustafson, but uh, Matt Gardner certainly does the Red Raider pitching coach. Matt, how are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you doing? So what are we up to? We're at two kids, right? Yeah, I got two. What uh, what ages? Uh, my little girl's uh, getting close to four. She's three, um, and the my little boy Grant is almost two. So, and Joe Hughes is at two. He's at two. J Bob's still at one. Okay. All, All right. right. I I love watching you guys after games get to uh, interact with your kiddos down there because interaction with kiddos during baseball season is hard to come by. Yeah, it is. They they really like the rosin bag on the mound, throwing it and playing in the dirt, so watching, running the bases and all that watching stuff. Watching the poof. So, yeah, from, so from the- <laughs> it's uh, after a win, there's about, you know, eight or ten kids down there just going crazy. That's awesome. So. Um, one of the reasons that I hang in in my profession is, uh, for instance, last night my son got to come up here and watch us call an NCAA tournament round two game from right here where we're sitting – looking at this TV with Coach Tadlock's <laughs> face on it. And th- I think they get some awesome experiences. And, and like when you guys inevitably, you know, go make postseason runs, they're going to get to have those experiences. And I just think that's awesome. No, it's pretty cool. Uh, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a dugout. You know, Dad was a high school coach and got to do that. So that was always fun. Um, you just, I mean, you just go to the baseball field. That's just kind of – Get your bat. Get your yeah, bag. Easiest place to be. You know, shut the <laughs> gates, make sure the gates are closed, and you're locked in. Yeah. Uh, so. <clears throat> what do you think about uh, the Oklahoma State dugout having uh, Robin Ventura and Matt Holiday? And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm looking over yeah. there going, what is this? 
what are these guys doing? Yeah, it was funny. I think we were talking and just like, I mean, you know, like Matt and, and Ventura, they probably at some point, they probably both hit third or fourth in the All-Star game at some point. Yeah. I'm sure, you know. Um, and Ventura was just, you know, not too long ago, just managing the White Sox. Yeah. So, um, pretty crazy. I mean, Matt's a big dude. Big I mean, dude. that's uh, what they're supposed to look like. And um, You want to talk about being intimidated. He was like, two years younger than me. We were on the same Legion team. And I'm like, how am I supposed to compete with this? Yeah, yeah. The sound uh, and the like, – speaking of being at the ballpark and, and being at the cage, I'd take my little round of beeps and then I'd step out and I'd hear this. Wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, those two guys over oh, there. It's just, God. it's pretty. You know, the, I I know they're having fun and enjoying what they're doing. And yeah, um, and so are you guys. Um, again, talking to Matt Gardner. Uh, your thoughts on you know twenty games in and and in charge of the arms and and all those things. Just kind of open it up, a very open ended. How you feeling? Man, still trying to figure some things out. Obviously, as you can see, I mean, we've had guys that have had really good outings and guys that have had some okay ones, but. I don't think, you know, with probably the limited number of fall practices and fall games um, versus spring practices, spring games, scrimmages, stuff like that, you know, we're trying to – you're kind of learning some stuff on the fly a little bit, you know, early. Uh, I definitely think early in the season just using guys in different situations where, you know, you haven't had a chance to do it before, you know, bringing guys with people on base. Yeah. Um, you know, how are they back-to-back days or – you know, throw one day off the next, throw the next day. Um, you know, with guys like Sublette and Divine, you have a little bit of an idea just because they've been here. Um, but some of those young guys just, you know, like, you know, when, hey, Keith, those two on Tuesday, how's he going to feel on Friday? Right, you know, right. um, how's he going to feel on Saturday? You know, if he throws two on Tuesday and two on Saturday, how's he feel Tuesday? You know, and that's just stuff you're probably learning as you go. You know, if a guy gets hot in the bullpen, is he going to be okay the next day? Um, is the stuff going to be the same? And and just little stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I think guys are, uh, you know, trying to get better each time out and um, kind of get things um, going the right direction and, um, you know, just trying to get better every day. Yeah, I, I love when you say things like that because even me, you know, and, I, and I've been around the game my whole life, those are really things I don't think about much. And so I, I know people love getting that kind of inside look on, on how this whole – you know, army kind of operates, yeah. and there's so much to it. You know, when it comes to these arms and and how much they throw and and how much they can handle. And I, I don't know about you, coach, but I think it's 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 a signal of really incredible depth when you can go Dobbins, Bristowski, Becker, not available. Uh, you know, under the knife, whatever kind of procedures they're dealing with, and still feel like you can do it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, if you, you know, losing those guys hurts, uh, no question about it. But you know, there's, you know, things happen, and you kind of have to deal with it. Everybody's going to have injuries, um, or just going to have setbacks, or whatever it may be. And just, you know, it doesn't matter if it's position player or, or on the arm side. It's just, you know, you kind of have to just, hey, next guy up and fill in and and get some things done. But yeah, we do have some depth, and you know, those young guys are they're learning as they go. Um, you know, and it can kind of make you get some gray hairs where, hey, you'll throw them on Tuesday and they'll be as good as you've ever seen them. And they're like, heck yeah, let's throw that guy on Saturday. And then he goes out Saturday and you're going, hey, what happened to the guy on Tuesday? Well, can you bring you that know? other guy yeah. back? But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's that's part of baseball and that's part of being a young kid and having to grow and, and becoming consistent um, each time out and preparing the right way and preparing every day and and sometimes, you know, they just go through where it's like, hey, man, I was really good. It's going to be easy again. You know, we're in college baseball. It's just not, you know, and I think that's just some growing th- pains you have to go through and guys figure it out. What's the makeup like of Patrick Monteverdi? Um, you know, Pat's, it's funny just uh, when he's on the mound, how much different than he is in person. You know, very laid back, you know, analytical, you know, understands pitching, understands his his body and how it works, his weights, you know, all that stuff, mobility stuff, he's really good. But then he gets on the mound, he's a totally different person as far as like, you know, he'll compete and kind of bebop around and get that thing going. Stride a little bit. Yeah, he's kind of got got some stuff going, which Swagger. it's just funny. It's funny to watch and, and not funny, but it's just, you know, it's, well, it, it's just different than who he is off the field. Yeah, and then and I talked to him, I was like, this is the nicest guy I've ever met. Yeah, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> he's when he's switch, on the mound, he's sweetheart. not. He turns that switch on and. Um, he's a different cat. So 
you I mean if you were having your choice you would you would want that right or are you I'm sure you're okay with a guy that's just kind of a stone-faced killer too out there you know I mean I, I'm sure whatever works works right yeah you, as long as they pitch good whatever works works <laughs> whatever you know, works like you know Bryce was not so much the nicest you know like Bryce was different than Montverde and John McMillan was different than Montverde and yeah. you know Caleb Killian was a very laid back individual and you know they're all different that's a good point. they're all different Caleb but, Patterson was crazy. Yeah, I mean, if they if they pitch good, they pitch good. You know, um, like that's just yeah part of it. How is uh, how's Divine? Divine's, you know what, he's been good. Like really looking with Andrew, just you know, the first outing in Globe Life was tough. Um, I think he was very disappointed, but each time out, he's gotten better. If you could look, you know, you take that outing away, and hey, his numbers really aren't bad, and he's actually thrown the ball pretty good. And we probably stayed with him a little bit too long yesterday. Um, you know, but he also has the guy, you know, one, two, if he gets the breaking ball down, it's probably a swing and miss. Cause he's out front. He's fooled on the pitch. It was just a hang and breaking ball, you know? And so he makes one mistake yesterday and gives up two runs, but you know, came in at a big spot, got out of a jam and, and Andrew's working. Um, but you know, really over the last, you take out really the first outing of the year, maybe the first two ever since then, he's been kind of regular Andrew divine. And, you know, that's stuff we look at and, um, you know, those guys have to look at because it can be hard. It's uh, no different. You know, Killian, I think in 19, um, you know, got off to a rough start, you know, and, and was frustrated and it's his draft year and all that. And we've had had the conversations and kind of reset the year. And then you look at from Big 12 play on, he was outstanding. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when you look at if guys get caught up looking at numbers and, you know, hey, my ERA's, you know, 12. And you're like, yeah, well, you had two bad outings. You know, like yeah. you can't, you can't get it down in one day. It's not, you know, like yeah. you can't go out there and feel like you got to be perfect every time. It's, it's no different than a hitter looking at numbers and going, "Hey, I'm hitting 200 and I got to get 10 hits today." Guilty. You know, so I'm gonna get 20 um, hits this this, this Saturday. Weekend. <laughs> this weekend, I'm getting a hit every at bat. I gotta get the average up. You oh, know? So man. it's, you know, numbers are. We look at them obviously. Um, you know, look at them as a whole, but we have stuff broken down in the last five games, ten games, last five appearances, you know, wherever it may be. Um, it kind of gives you a little better understanding of kind of where guys are at. But those things can be evil when you look at them all the time. I know. You know, I you just, that's that's kind of like what Coach T said. We're, sometimes you're better off if you're just playing every day. Yeah. You know, where you just Get can't. Get back out there and go. You can't look at it. It's just like, hey, I'm in the lineup. I'm playing today. Hey, I'm on the mound. I'm pitching today. And there's no – Hey, I got time to think about it and look at it and think, how am I going to get this down or how am I going to get the average up? And Hey, man, just go play. All right. Coach, thanks for the time, man. I appreciate it. It went fast. No problem. All right. We'll come back and wrap it up after this on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. And back here for one more, and it's going to be a quick one. Join us at The Law on Friday at 6.30, Texas Tech against South Florida. You can listen on the Texas Tech Sports Network. Thanks, everybody, for listening in tonight. Appreciate Coach Tim Tadlock, Matt Gardner, and our producer engineer, Michael Tackett. I'm Jeff Haxton saying God bless, guns up, and good night from Lubbock.